And good morning from foggy Vienna. We are now two days removed from the Ineos 159 Challenge where Eliud Kipchoge broke through the two hour marathon barrier. And I want to give a quick shout out to Sunset Vine Media and Ineos 159, of course, for giving me the permission to uh, publish these clips of the race. So it's about 20, a little over 20 minutes of race footage broken down into the 5K splits. And here's a couple of the splits for all of you to absorb and process yourself. 5K split for Elliot Kipchoge in the Ineos 159 Challenge race, 1410. 10K, 2820. Oh my goodness. At 20K, 5647. And then jumping ahead, of course, to the finish, you all know he finished in one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. Absolutely incredible. His average time per 100 meters was 17.02 seconds, 200 meters 34, 400 meters 68. So if you think about a workout that you do where you do 68, me 68 second 400 meter repeats, he did that many, many times. And he repeated his 100 meter pace 422 times. So that's 17.02. I'm going to step aside, let you enjoy, and the reason I'm publishing this video is, frankly, I was out filming uh, the effort by Kipchoge, so I actually didn't get to see the entire race, and now this is not the full race, but it's the most important parts, the 5K splits, and so I want to be able to go back and reflect and look at Kipchoge's focus, and most importantly, for, from my perspective, is to look at his gait cycle, his stride, and how he just carries his body through that entire uh, that entire that speed that he has to sustain for 26.2 miles. So it's a learning moment for me as I show you and share these race results with all of you. Okay, step it aside, Kipchoge, take it away. And we are just moments away, and there he is. You know, thousands, if not millions, of people will be going out for a Saturday run today. Well, this could be the most famous Saturday run the world has ever seen, and it's all about this man, Elliot. Kipchoge from Kenya. They're the pacemakers. Bernard Lagat is the captain. And let's just remind ourselves of the formation of these pacemakers. There are five teams of seven, and that is the open V that Ed was talking about with E.K. Elliot Kipchoge at the heart of it, and two wingmen, if you like, are behind, all guaranteed to take the wind resistance out of Elliot's performance. Five team captains, the first of them, Bernard Lagat, he's 44 years old. He's the oldest of the pacemakers in action today. The youngest is just 19 years old. And this first group will take them through to the first three kilometers. The current weather, well, almost perfect. A little bit more humid at 90% than was expected and was wanted. But uh, Elliot Kipchoge, I'm sure, will be able to, to cope with that. So we're into the final few minutes before countdown. What on earth seconds. is going through the mind of Elliot Kipchoge? How quickly, Ten. how fast is his heart beating? Five. We have liftoff. Apollo Kipchoge is up and away. And the challenge, very easy to say, to run 26.2 miles, 42.2 kilometers in under two hours. Very easy to say, rather more difficult to achieve. And they're on their way on the Reichsbrücke, traveling over the Danube. And they're... Well, one of the big landmarks coming up is the five kilometer split. The clock approaching 14 minutes, as you can see there, bottom right of screen. And if he's on schedule, he should be hitting five kilometers in 14 minutes and 13 seconds. And as Gabby was saying before we started here, just contrast that to what the average person does, certainly in Great Britain and throughout Europe in a park run, five kilometers. Many people watching today, of course, will be watching the Ineos 159 challenge and then going out to run a park run themselves. So Elliot Kipchoge should be now hitting the five kilometer mark. Ed, how is he looking? I think he looks pretty good, but then he always looks pretty good. So <laughs> let's see what, you know, they, they say in Kenya, the race starts at 35. Um, if he's still looking good at 35, I think he's got, a, you know, a, a great shot. Um, but, you know, one of the tells that you have with Elliot, if we can uh, see him, is that 
sometimes he looks with his thumbs when he's very relaxed. He looks like he's brushing lint from his, uh, you know, lapels of his tuxedo jacket, perhaps. Uh, you know, you get this beautiful rhythm, and you know he's slightly in trouble when he stops brushing lint. So, um, you know, right now, he looks super relaxed, and it doesn't look like uh, this pace is hurting him too much, but let's, let's see how he goes. Absolutely. Just have a moment here to think about how good this looks. Take away how fast they're running. These guys just look incredible, especially when you get that, you know, the front-on shot, and you see, you, you know, you see these guys running so fast, 13 miles an hour, and the kind of ease in the stride. I think, you know, Philip particularly and <laughs> Jakob look so good when they're when they're on the. They make the, it look so easy, don't yeah. they? But reality is, they've worked so hard to make it look so easy. They've just upped the pace. And you know what I love is, you know, the lasers are pouring out this this place on the road where the where the guys have to find their marks you know imagine having to do all this running at 13 miles an hour you know we're, we're talking about you know a pace that would be crazy for most people even very fit club athletes to to consider and you're having to absolutely hit your spots 12 centimeters to the left or the right you know you're you're not doing your job absolutely right and as uh, Shalane mentioned there is uh, there are parallel you can see them now on the tarmac those parallel lines in orange which um, they have to keep within, of course, down the Hauptalle. That's very straightforward. But it's actually when they go around the two roundabouts at the either end of this course that that becomes crucial. Yeah, those lines are made for Elliot so that he does not cross over, so that he stays um, in the valid zone for running. If you were to cross over one of the lines, that would create an invalid race because he would be running a, a shorter tangent line than the actual distance of 26.2. They're through 15 kilometers. Yet another little... Landmark has been achieved as they go round the Lusthaus once again. This time they're going anti-clockwise. This is the smaller of the two roundabouts. And you can see, as Shalane has just been saying, that although the pacemakers can go either side of the orange line, Elliot has to stay within it. Yeah, and you know... And I can confirm that it has just started to rain now. So if we see one or two splits and spats on the, um, the camera lens, that is now real rain as they go around the Prater Stern again, the, the larger of the two uh, roundabouts at either end of this Hauptalle course. And they are now through 20 kilometres. We'll bring you the latest split as soon as we get it. But 56-52, Shalane, was the target for 20 kilometres. And very shortly, we will be through the halfway point. Yeah, I mean... They did not want rain. <laughs> they did not predict rain, but you know what? Elliot is prepared for anything. Um, I don't think that's going to deter him in any way. He probably isn't even recognizing that it's raining. Um, there's some great fans trying to run along the course on the outside there, um, maybe trying to capture a picture or encourage, but I don't think he'll be lasting very long. Oh, there he goes, chanting. What a surprise. He's disappearing off the picture. <laughs> There is Elliot. We've been talking about all sorts of things. And, of course, we shouldn't forget that the man at the heart of this whole day, this whole several months, years of planning, is Elliot Kipchoge. I'm noticing just a small, small gap from him to Matt Centrowitz. And I don't know, oh, if it was, you know, him just giving a little space or if he's kind of falling off a little bit. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see. Um, hopefully he tucks right back in there with Matt. So through 20 kilometres, 2.52, so just outside the desired 2.50 pace for a sub-two-hour marathon. But uh, the green boxes show that those kilometres were within the uh, target. And you can see, netting out of all that, we are still nine seconds inside sub-two-hour pace. 159.59, of course, is the target. Maybe even better than that. And the next milestone, Ed, will be the halfway mark. And a reminder... I was able to do my job, stay relaxed, and... Uh... Again, I can't just believe how he's running eight plus of these. It's just an incredible human being, um, a once in a generation athlete, and uh, I'm just honored to be a part of it. Before we let you go, just one, one question about the challenges out there. Are there any challenges that we might no, not see? And did you feel any rain? As, as a team captain, um, our biggest challenge was making sure we stayed within a line um, on those roundabouts and uh, so we can make sure he runs the, the accurate 26.2. So the other guys in front of me and behind us were allowed to go outside those lines, but we had to stay inside of it. Um, and then the second, um, I think, just kind of difficult thing out there that you might not um, see on the camera is just how loud it is. So 
we were supposed to communicate with each other, let you know, slow down, pick it up, stay together, pack it up. When we're doing the exchanges, like captain in, captain out. And it's extremely hard to hear out there, even when you're like two, three feet away from someone. So um, you might have to tap a guy on the shoulder or uh, kind of bump him out of the way if you're, if you're trying to um, make any kind of movement out there. But um, other than that, it's been, uh, it's great. Matt, thanks for your time. Enjoy your cool down. I appreciate it. Thanks. Matt Centrowitz there, having done a, a terrific job, and you've got the sense there of the pride and the honour that he feels in being part of this, what we hope will be an historic day. Lots of chatting, just uh, left of picture there, just out of picture is uh, Valentine Trell, the athlete's manager there, handing now more drinks and more gels to Elliot if he wants them, and he does take something on board there. Communication, uh, Shalane, so, so important uh, throughout this process. Yeah, I mean, he has such a tight-knit team. He has worked with the same coach um, throughout his career. Patrick Sang has been by his side. He also has had the same massage therapist th since 2002. Elliot is just a very loyal man, and he likes to build a team of people he can really trust around him. We've talked a lot today, Ed, about his physical... All momentum. If you see, they're running ahead of the green line, it seems. So it seems like they're... Um, they're feeling good. This is a, a critical moment coming up. They're approaching the 30 kilometer mark and uh, the time we're looking out for here is 125.18. They're comfortably inside that at the moment. 125.18, so in about 16 seconds time would be sub to uh, our mouth and pace. And in Monza, he went through in 125.20. <laughs> More fans, it's the same guy again. He's having his moment in the sun there, in the gray on the left of picture. He wants to be a part of history today. And who can blame him? We all do. We're hoping that Elliot Kipchoge will be making history today. 30 kilometers have been completed. And let's just go back to Monza, just as a little guide, because in Monza, he was two seconds outside of sub two hour marathon pace. Yeah, he's he's doing fantastically well. I, I saw a little grimace there, so, uh, you know, obviously it's hurting. It would hurt <laughs> doing this. Be expected. 12K to go then. This is where the critical stage of the race starts. If we were in normal marathon conditions and this was a race with lots of other competitors, they often say that the racing starts at 30 kilometers. Normally, somebody takes the handbrake off at 30K. Yeah, that is uh, traditionally when I've been in major championships. It's 30K, gloves are thrown down to the road, hats are off. Now, it, now it's the real fighting begins. And you know, Elliot doesn't have um, competitors to, to be fighting against, um, but his, his race is against the clock today in a race towards history. He has to be thinking. Stanley Cabeni there as they uh, go around the uh, Lust House. One more time, that's the smaller of the two roundabouts. We are approaching 35 kilometers. We've got, what, just over 20 minutes of running to get Elliot Kipchoge home over the finish line inside the two-hour mark, just to stress. This has never been done before. No, it won't be a world record, but the whole point of this exercise, if you're just joining us, was not to break world records. He's already got the world record. This was stretching the limits. What is the limit of human endeavor? And as the hashtag we've been using said, and as Elliot says so eloquently, uh, no human is limited. He wants to do something that has never been done before. We've had a man on the mood. We've had Roger Bannister breaking the four-minute mile 65 years ago. We've had uh, Edmund Hillary on Everest all those years ago. This would be, along the same lines, this would be an achievement of that magnitude. No human is limited. And we are now, Ed, into the last 20 minutes of this being a, a reality. I'm just watching his face here, and it is absolutely fascinating. His eyes are like dinner plates. He's having to talk himself through this. He is telling himself that he's got it. You know, he's smiling a lot. It is like... Um, it's like a man who's told himself to dismiss what his body is telling him. Yeah. His body is saying, stop. He's a man possessed. <laughs> but, you know, he's trying to become a pioneer and a trailblazer right now. And it's a threshold so bold and inconceivable, yet here we stand at the doorstep with the notion that the human spirit can take us across it. And I believe... This is history unfolding on the streets of Vienna this morning. It's a Saturday run like we've never seen before. Listen at the noise. The crowd getting right behind him. Goodness me, 300 metres to go. He can see the finish line here. 
Neil Armstrong we had on the moon in 1969. We had Roger Bannister, the four-minute mile 65 years ago. Edmund Hillary, the first man to climb Everest in 1953. We have one minute to go. Elliot Kipchoge is on his way here. It's not this, going to humble, be a minute. this humble farmer who used to run two miles to school every day and back. He used to go to the nearest town on his bike to sell milk at the local market. And now, through hard work and discipline, he's pointing. Come on, he says. Elliot Kipchoge has the hand of history on his shoulder. He has less than 200 metres to go. Elliot Kipchoge, let's keep an eye on the clock. Into the final 20 seconds, Elliot Kipchoge. Whoa! Has on his shoulder, 140, oh, oh, oh. 140, the unofficial oh, time. there's his wife. Elliot, Elliot Kipchoge storms into the history books in Vienna. 159.40, the unofficial time. The first man to run a marathon in under two hours. One final lung-busting stride for Kipchoge. One giant leap for human endeavour. And, you know, Kipchoge was right. No human is limited. And now he can celebrate. He has done it. And to Roger Bannister, Neil Armstrong, Edmund Hillary, we can now add the name of Elliot Kipchoge. He's going to have a chat with you. If you don't want to come on this side, Elliot, if we come this side, you, you have just yes, made history. Yes, yes. You've become the first man to ever run a sub to our marathon. You've done it. Yes. How are you feeling? I am feeling good. Uh, it has taken 65 years for, for a human being to make history in sport. After Roger Panster made history in 1954, it took another 62, 63 years. I tried and I did not get. Uh, now it's 65 years. I have tried. I'm the happiest man to run under two hours in order to inspire ma many people, to tell people that uh, no human is limited, you can do it. I'm expecting more of the athletes in this all over the world to run under two hours after, after, after today. I mean, what incredible words. Inspiration doesn't do it justice. How hard was that run? How were you feeling at the very, the most painful part? Actually, I, I can't say and I can't find, but uh, the first thing is they, when I woke up at five, uh, at 4.50, to actually the starting time, that's 8.15, it was my high hardest times even before the start. The time, actually, it was four hours, but it, it, it was like 30 minutes, so it was the hardest times. But all in all, the race is actually, for, to the first kilometer is really hard the way it is. It needs actually the perseverance, it needs dedication, it needs uh, the, the, the hard run, yes. Your pacemakers were fantastic, start to finish as well. Absolutely, remember, the 41 pacemakers are among the best athletes ever in the whole world. From the Matthew Sandro, it's the, one of the world ch Olympic champion for 1500, to all the marathoners and everyone, they are the best. I, I can say, uh, uh, I want to say thank you for them. I want to, to appreciate them for accepting to do the job. And, and, and together, it, it is not, uh, I am not telling you to talk about we made this trip together in this one. It takes a team. Patrick Sang, you're at the heart of that team that made this possible. Right now, your feelings in words. Can you describe it to us? It's been 17 years in the making. Uh, I'm still in the moon. I'm yet to come down to heart. <laughs> I mean, uh, really excited. I mean, happy for him, for what he has achieved. He's actually inspired all of us that uh, we can stretch our limits in our lives and uh, we can do more than we think we can do. What was the first thing that you said to him as he crossed that line? I said, congratulations, you, you, you've done it and you've, uh, you know, you've made history. Was there ever any doubt and what was it like actually watching it from the sidelines, knowing that you've done all the work you could have done? Uh, I watched the race from the Pesas stand and I saw the, the, the spirits of the, te the, the Pesas and, uh, I mean, and I watched the race, the, the changeover and all that. Everything was, went perfectly right. What do you think this means, not only for Elliot, but for the rest of humanity? For, for the sport, it's challenging other young athletes and uh, athletes that are still active that they can stretch and perform better than they think. For the humanity, whatever level you are in, you can move yourself to another level. And finally, what of that time and can that, can that be broken? 
Of course, uh, you know, Elliot has told us that we can, the records are meant to be broken. So I'm sure down the road somebody will come again and say, I, I want to try it. But history has been made. The first time to run under two hours, it's unbelievable. What a moment. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all the people who came to watch, the supporters from, who came from all over the world to watch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted to say that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has joined me just outside of the studio because you've got to go off and do the presentation. This was Elliot's dream, but it was your dream as well. What does it feel like to see it come into fruition? Sensational, really. <laughs> it's quite difficult to believe it's actually happened because it happened so quickly. But that last kilometre where he actually accelerated and he came through on his own, I mean, a, I mean, a superhuman, really. I can't believe he did it. I mean, I can't believe he ran the first half, he ran the first half marathon in less than an hour and then he had to do that again. I mean, it, 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 the mind boggles for anybody who's just a normal human being, and these guys aren't, but the pacemakers, the technology and everything that you have added into this mix, to see it come off today. I mean, it's been immaculately well organised. I mean, everything has to go right to, to do this. But I think it's so nice to see the pacers being part of this because normally running is such a solitary sport. You run for yourself and here they're all running for someone else and they are just so full of enthusiasm. These, uh, you know, the pace guys are all world-class athletes. They're the best athletes in the world and they're all running for Elliot. They've never done anything like that before. It's almost like a new sport for them, you know. Congratulations. I know you've got the presentation to do as well. Thank you so much, Jim, and well done. And well done to you and all of your team because this is the feeling today, actually, that Jim's right. It's a solitary sport, but today was about being part of a team, whether it was the pacemakers, Shalane, or all the people, Ed, who've been involved in this. And I think that has come out in the feeling in this crowd well I'm still what did you make of what Elliot just did no it is one I think uh, you know thinking about my world record making history but this one is really a big history running a marathon the speed Elliot was going you know is unbelievable I cannot even describe because today I was crying you know I've been there in that stress but being here today and witness this uh, record you know unbelievable you know I have no word to say because I know Kipchoge I've seen him and I'm here to see the history being met today, so it's unbelievable for me. Because you know him personally, what can you tell us about his character that results in what we've just seen? The way I see his character, you know, it reminds me when I was training, you know. Concentration, training was nothing else, you know. It's only running, it's staying even at the training camp, no driving. You eat, you sleep, you train, you sleep. And that's really, you know, the person I miss to see so many athletes to do what he said you is doing. And being in Eldoret, going in the Kataka training camp and watching him training there and seeing him being humble and down to heart. So that's really, he touched me. This person, he knows what he's doing and he wants to make history in the world. Because he makes it look so, so easy, you almost don't realise that it's difficult. Could you describe how difficult it is to take your body to that place and stay there? For me, you know, I was surprised to see him running, let's say, every kilometre in 250. You know, I think I cannot make it that in uh, even if I have to run only 800 metres. So staying in that, really, it's a mental part of it, you know. This one is, um, you train day in, day out, even when you're sleeping, it's like you're calculating. You know, every time you're eating something, it's like you're counting, you know, how many spoons you are taking. So it's really... A big concentration. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of time. Well, so it's a special day. Thank you. For you. you know, this was uh, one guy being propelled, really. You know, he had to do it himself, but he couldn't have done it without the rest of them. So. Well, the presentation is, is going to be a trophy, which obviously is a one of a kind, really, because guess what? Nobody's ever had the sub two hour trophy before. And I think it's really more of a symbol. It's a symbolic gesture to Elliot. And I know that later today he will take his pacemakers and he will present them with trophies and awards as well, because he realizes just how important they were, not just in setting the pace, but in boosting his morale and keeping him going when it got a little bit tough for him out there. It didn't appear to get massively tough because he hides it well, as we know. But he really is a team man, and he's enjoyed the camaraderie of everybody with him. We actually thought that he went through a bit of a sticky patch, you know, in the middle there, and he really had to talk himself out of it. So. Well, we have witnessed history. It has been an incredible two hours here in Vienna. You were part of history. Goodbye. And there you have it. Absolutely unbelievable. History was made here in Vienna, Austria on October 12th, 
2019, we'll be able to go back and say to, peep, to our kids and our grandkids, I was there or I watched live on YouTube when Kipchoge broke two hours in the marathon. And like Bannister breaking four minutes in the mile, I believe this is just the beginning of runners around the world, the elite runners around the world, asking themselves, if Kipchoge can do it, maybe I can do it. And if this is your first time on the YouTube channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. I don't think you'll be disappointed. This is a daily running blog YouTube channel, okay? And okay, on the right, we're gonna toss it back to the cinematic cut of the Ineos 159 challenge. And then on the left, the actual vlog from the day, two days ago, when Kipchoge broke through the two hour barrier. All right, that's all for today. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.